Okay, so I'm going to show you guys real quick um, how I print the transfers for mugs. So I have a template that I made, um, and I, I give it away for free. Um, if you guys just ask for it, I'll send you a link, but it's only for studio. Um, I do most of my mugs. Um, they're the 15-ounce ones. And how this is set up, it's to put two um, two mugs on one sheet. So I use eight and a half by 11 paper and I know that they make paper that is mug size, but when I tried to switch it around to a pre-cut size, I couldn't get the printer to print in the preference settings that I wanted. So I stick with the eight and a half by 11. And the cool thing with Studio is you can have um, lines in here as guides, but they won't print. So as long as, if you go over here to the line style, as long as the thickness is zero, they won't print. You could see them, but they won't print. So I have um, I have a little guide in here that shows people how to use it when I send it to people, um, but I'm gonna walk you through it. So I'm just going to get rid of these. Um, but basically it's sized perfectly for the size of a 15 ounce mug. And I do have an 11 ounce version too, but these lines show the center part for each side. So I do my mugs double-sided. Um, so I need to do this autism eye mug. I already have it formatted, but I'm going to show you guys how to format it. So you grab your design. I like to use the ping file. So there's a transparent background and you just size it how big you want it. Now I do 15 ounce mugs in an 11 ounce mug press. So um, I don't bring it all the way up to the edges, which it looks funny to have it all the way up to the edges anyway, but um, I leave some space because if I get too close to the edge, oops, I don't wanna zoom in that much. It, um, it's kind of faded. So the, the cool thing here is, so Silhouette has a little line that shows you where the center point is. I line up that line with this line here. And so I just figure out what size I want it. Maybe a little bit bigger up here, just so I'm not too close to the edge of the mug. And then I move it over so it's centered right on that line. And then I copy it. If you hold down Alt on your keyboard while you grab it and drag it over and keep holding Alt and then unclick and drop it, you can let go and it copies for you. So random little life hack there. So you figure out where you want it. And then if you select both the background template and the two designs and you come over here to the alignment or I guess it's transform panel, you can hit this little uh, align middle uh, button and it'll center it for you, which is cool. So then I select both, hold down Alt, drag it down, and do the same thing, let go. Now I do them each individually again. Now this one already lined up perfect, but I, you just wanna make sure that it lined up right where you wanted it. And then select them both and hit this align middle, and then you're good. So how this template works is I have a dashed line over here that you can't see very well, but that one actually has a weight to it. It's just point 0.1. So that will print. And what that does is it it's a guide to tell me where to cut the paper once it's printed. So I first cut it down the middle. So I have the two different pieces and then I cut it along this top line, making sure that that top line is, well, not top, but bigger line is cut off because if you leave any of that on there it'll end up on your mug. I do different settings for mugs than I do for anything else like the fabrics and stuff I, I use uh, premium presentation mat but um, for mugs premium presentation mat put down too much ink and it made everything just kind of um, fuzzy like it didn't have nice clean lines so um, I'll show you here how we do it so make sure that you have the print order turned on over here under page setup. It'll tell you if you've got your settings set up wrong. So the print order is this little gray line. Um, I always make sure that's on and then preview it before I actually hit print. So if you go up to file print, 
you choose your printer. I have the WF7720 and go under preferences. And I already have a preset set up, but I'm going to go through how I have it set up. So I have my paper always in paper cassette one. Paper cassette two doesn't let me necessarily do all the settings that I want. It might let me do the high quality plain paper, but it doesn't let me choose premium presentation mat. But just out of habit, I do paper cassette one, but whichever one you've got it in. Uh, the paper size is eight and a half by 11. I've got landscape. I do not have borderless checked. Um, I've found that the size changes a little bit when I do borderless. Um, when I have it turned off, um, the sizes come out exactly how they are on the screen. Um, so here's the different things I do for mugs. So I use high quality plain paper as the paper setting, not premium presentation mat. And then under quality, you go under more and you push it all the way up to the highest quality and hit OK. Um, color, obviously, two-sided printing is off. All these things I didn't mess with. It's all the same from the defaults. Um, and then under color correction, and this is the same as when I do shirts too. Um, I have custom. And when you go into advanced, you choose ICM. Then the software isn't messing with the settings. It's just going off of the printer settings. So the ink that I use is Cosmos ink. And it, it, it doesn't have color profiles. So it's set to use off of Epson's color profiles. Um, and then the last thing that I have is high speed should not be checked but mirror image should be checked. Now this is confusing. This design, it actually has a word upside down. So this isn't mirrored. This is how it should be. Cause you can see seeing the world differently is right. Um, that's part of the design to have autism upside down. But if you check mirror image, then you don't have to actually mirror it yourself. The computer or the printer will do it for you. So those are my settings. Um, you hit okay and I would hit apply and then hit cancel before I go my final print and make sure that print border is where it should be. Um, if you've got something, the size or something set wrong, landscape, portrait, you'll see that that line is goofy. So if that line is showing up where it should, you should be good. And you go to file and print. I already have this printed, but um, you just print it and then I will show you the next steps from there. Okay, so once your transfer is printed, we need to cut it out so it's ready for two different mugs. So on my little template here, you could see, well, hopefully you can see, I don't know, but there's a very small little gray line um, showing you where to cut. So we are going to, I'm just gonna push it up against my little mat here. This direction first. Because once you cut that off, you'll lose your middle. You want that middle to be your guide. So cut it all the way down the middle. And then we're going to cut it right along that line, making sure that we cut off that line, but getting it as close as you can to it. I'll do that for both. I'm just making one today, um, but this is a good seller. So I, I just go ahead and print two and just leave it sitting aside for another one and do them all at the same time. But that's how you cut it. And then um, I'm gonna move the camera and show you how to tape it on. Okay, so this is how the mugs come. Um, I get them from Johto Imaging Supplies. Uh, they're all wrapped in this little plastic and I save this. And when I go to ship them out, I wrap them right back up. But I don't do anything to prep the mug. Um, I wipe it off, make sure my hands are clean. I wipe it off just to make sure there's no little pieces of lint on it. And then I put it upside down and I take my transfer, make sure, okay, this is a confusing one because the word's actually upside down. But you want to make sure that if you're flipping the mug upside down to place the transfer on, that your transfer is upside down too. Uh, but the way that I have these sized, if you look at it, it's perfectly sized for the um, flat part of the mug. And so I like to just center it all the way up to the top. And I use high heat tape. Um, don't use painter's tape. 
I, people have told me that they've been told that before and it, it melts, it's not good. So you want um, high heat tape, it's this yellow, kind of clearish stuff. I've got this little tape dispenser here that I use. And um, I just center it around the handle so that it's centered as best as possible and then flush with the table. And I get it, I hold it there nice and tight. And then sometimes I kind of fumble around with this, but I get my tape. Oh, come on. And I tape it on as tight as I can. Because if it moves at all, your transfer will have some shadowing or be kind of blurry. Okay, we're gonna do this smarter from that side. So I put on two pieces of tape. So it's on really tight. There shouldn't be any wrinkles. Um, I usually kind of eyeball it just to make sure that everything looks good. Checking out all the little details first, but that's how I line them up. And I just tape it on just like that. And then it's ready for the press. Okay, so I have uh, an eight and one swing away. So it's got all these attachments. I'm using the smaller of the two mug attachments that came with mine um, so that it, it's actually the width of, of the insert is smaller so that there, it makes more room for a bigger mug. Um, but every press is a little different, so make sure you've got an attachment that'll work for your mug. Um, I wrap it in paper to protect the press itself. So this is just a sheet of copy paper. I just wrap around the whole thing. The press is set to 400 degrees. Um, this press is kind of goofy. Um, it beeps and beeps the entire time it's warmed up. So. I have the timer set to 999 seconds and running so it doesn't sit and beep in the background. So I use a separate timer and um, we do our mugs for two minutes and 40 seconds in a 400 degree press. And uh, we've done a whole bunch of tests and you're gonna want, I mean, there's still gonna be a testing process you'll have to do with your press because they're all a little bit different as far as um, temps and stuff but 400 degrees for two minutes and 40 seconds would probably be a good place to start because that works perfect for us. So I set the timer. Um, the important thing is you want to have the pressure tight, but not tight enough you're gonna break it. Um, I have yet to break a mug, knock on wood, um, and I have the pressure turned up really high. Um, basically, it's as tight as I could do it. Um, and you don't want to move it around once it's in the press and risk moving your transfer. And you want to get it centered. If you look at, at the, the element, you'll see where the sides are. And so for a 15 ounce mug, it could be a little bit tricky because the mug is actually bigger than the area there. So get it centered as best as you can and clamp it in and set the timer and let it go. So I'm just going to slide it in because I got this paper around it. And I'm looking at where the mug is and where the element is. And you just want to have it centered, but make sure that everything is under the element as best you can. And it's okay if you fumble a little bit. You see how hard I push there? It's, it's kind of a hard push. But then you set the timer and you let it go for the t full time. And then we'll pull it out. Okay, so the timer's about to go off. So, without burning yourself, open it up and slide it out. And then I leave the paper on. This is my little life hack that we figured out after messing up a bunch of mugs. Leave the paper on and you want to start cooling it off. Now, I don't do the water because people say that you'll get a little micro cracking and the mug will likely break down the road. So, and honestly, it was a pain to me. I had to have the water out and whatever. So, we don't do the water. Um, I stick it in front of a cool window, so I have a windowsill right here. Um, obviously, the warmer it gets, I'm not going to be able to use my windowsill, um, but a fan, a fan will work. Um, and just let it cool completely, and once it's cooled, we'll pull off the transfer and we'll look at the mug. Okay, so once the mugs have cooled, you just peel off the transfer at this point. You can grab the tape. Sometimes if I'm um, thinking ahead, I'll kind of dog ear the, um, the tape so it's a little bit easier to grab. Okay. 
But that is it. Now we'll show you. Um, I wanted to show the, the difference in print settings. Um, the premium presentation mat versus the high quality plain paper. Um, I have an old mug here that was when we were still kind of perfecting um, times and you can see the difference. Okay, so I apologize for the swear words on these, but uh, this is the only ones that I have some to compare side by side. Now this was a different ink too, so the colors are better on the left, but the left one is with the high quality plain paper setting. And the one on the right is with premium presentation matte and the words just kind of have a glow around them. It's like there's too much ink and it kind of bled. It's really hard to pick up on the video, but I tried to do a picture too and it wasn't really showing, but there it's just kind of a fuzzy glow. So the the high quality plain paper is definitely a cleaner transfer. So anyway, there's that. Um, that's it. You peel yeah. it off. If you wait till it's cooled, then you don't have to worry about moving the transfer. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on that better. But it turns out great. We've just we've got these down. Um, some of the troubleshooting, um, as far as the time and temps go. Um, if your black is turned brown, you've done it for too long. If it's faded, more of like a gray, um, you haven't done it long enough um, or hot enough, uh, the variables there. But I would say start with 400 degrees for two minutes and 40 seconds and see how that works for you. Um, I'm usually a huge advocate in checking the temperature of your press, but my little crappy swing away with attachments, uh, the temperature is all over the map when I check it with my heat gun. So um, I, I don't know if checking your temperature is gonna make a difference because on one end it could be 25 degrees too low on another end too high, but then I move it an inch and it's vice versa. So I'm guessing that when it's in the press for that long, the temperature kind of evens out throughout the mug, distributes the heat. And so having it a little inconsistent throughout the press isn't a huge deal because our mugs obviously turn out great and um, it's it's got a weird whoa my phone's like blowing up stop it um so anyway and as a little bonus i will add to the end um, packaging and shipping i have logo stickers that i stick on the bottom when they're getting ready to go out the door and then I wrap them in bubble wrap and box them up and I will do a little fast forward because these ones have to actually go out. So mm -hmm. let me know if you have any questions. I'll post links to anything I could think of in the description of the video. Um, and yeah, have fun making some mugs. They're super, super fun. Uh -huh.